I am Dr. John Grather. This brief video will demonstrate the ease of use of the portable slip lamp camera system and the light sources that can be used singly or in combination to achieve the best image of the eye pathology. All images shown, including this video, were recorded with the small Canon cameras. Dr. Bauer is demonstrating the bracket with an adjustable arm that allows the integration of the slit beam with the camera. The spindle beneath the bracket securely connects the system to the slit lamp carriage. The camera light system is attached by moving the slit lamp oculars and slit beam arm to the left. Remove the cover plate and simply insert the spindle into the central column. The camera is turned on, the flash turned off, and the macro mode is engaged for all of the photography. The camera is positioned for the desired view from the full face to minute anterior segment detail. Most external subjects, such as lid lesions, are taken using the battery-powered cold LED ring light mounted with the camera. That light will also generate a Purkinje image on the cornea and can be modified with a mask. Corneal or anterior segment pathology can be imaged with the slip beam alone or supplemented with the ring light. The support arm is adjusted to bring the slit beam into the picture. In some situations, a single LED light on a flexible arm will provide the best illumination or may be used to supplement the slit beam. Various combinations can be tried to best illuminate the lesion. One quickly learns with practice which lighting arrangement is likely to produce the desired result. The photo is taken and can be immediately reviewed in the camera. Once a satisfactory image is achieved, the card can be removed and transferred to the computer or printer, or the image can be transferred wirelessly. The image can be modified if necessary and can be made immediately available for patient counseling. The photo can be printed or entered electronically into the permanent medical record when appropriate. This montage of images will demonstrate the range of subjects that this system can record. I have arranged them starting with the external images of the eye and the pre- and post-op surgical images. They are followed by images of increasing magnification and detail of the cornea and anterior segment. I originally developed this system to aid in the orientation of the toric lens implant, and it is still used for that purpose. But I quickly realized how convenient and useful it was for all forms of ocular photography. Its portability makes it immediately available at any slit lamp without the necessity of moving the patient. By recording many of the images myself, I am assured that I have the optimum photograph and I have it immediately available for patient counseling. I have found that the patient's interest is greatly enhanced by viewing a photo of his or her own eye. The following clips were made using the Canon camera's video mode and the LED ring light. The first is a young lady with an anisocoria caused by blunt trauma to the left eye with a weighted plastic dart. She had otherwise normal eyes and ocular movement. The second patient recently had an orbital decompression for severe endocrine exophthalmus. Her condition is still unstable, and she will ultimately require additional surgery for the induced strabismus. Finally, I have included a normal eye, demonstrating the addition of the slit beam to a video illuminated by a single LED light. Okay.
I believe this photographic system used appropriately can improve the quality of the medical record and also enhance the physician-patient interaction. Thank you for your interest.